hello youtube i'm just going to keep this intro quick and short today i'm just going to make part two of fontaine so without further ado let's just jump into the video the first time we came here i don't know why we start from here all the way back in the desert <laughs> look who it is oh running into you in a place like this i can see you two still love wandering around we were just about to head out to fontaine what's up there yeah, what brings you here you want to come to fontaine with us nothing too interesting just escorting a shipment of goods i'm on my way to report back that's when i saw you two all the way over there chatting away what were you two talking about anyway? We were preparing to leave Sumeru and head to Fontaine. Huh? Y you serious? Yes. Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. You don't want us to leave something like that? Oh, you're gonna miss me, Dea? Something into you like this will become a rarity. Uh, oh, man. I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. This will be the last time you'll see me. Hey. How about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? I don't think that is necessary. We're pretty good. I didn't know they have a soft spot like this. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? We'll leave as soon as we finish. A few more preparation. Hmm. And who is this guy? Why are you prying on us? <laughs> I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Oh my god. Guys, is they always like this? I didn't know they have a soft spot like this. I'm starting to feel emotional when they is like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> Guys, why is they sounds so sad? Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. They are with her puppy eyes saying goodbye to us. All right, Dea, take care. Oh, wait, I just realized that Deha is the only one that knows we're leaving Sumeru. The rest of our friends here don't even know. Like Al Haitham, Sainor, and everyone. They don't even know. And Dea can tell them anyway. Now, where should we head next? Over here. Uh, good thing I unlocked this place before I do this quest. So I can easily just navigate through it. I feel like something bad will happen. We might get arrested for no reason or something like that. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I hope something bad doesn't happen. After crossing all that sand and water, we finally made it! Oh, this must be Fontaine's port! Wow! Everything looks so advanced in Fontaine! I heard that the industry here is extremely developed, and there are all kinds of unusual machines! So I heard, and it's about what I imagine. It's even more impressive than I expected. Just seeing the sights as a tourist is nice, but maybe it would be better if we found something to do! Okay, good plan. What should we even do anyway? Let's start by meeting the Hydro Archon. Wow, straight to the point. Seeking out the seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Our journey is to find my siblings and also to find the truth. Yeah, the more we can learn, the better. I doubt she can even provide us with answers anyway. So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Hmm. Nahira said that she has a very unique personality. Whatever that means. Hey, what are you looking over there for? There's a girl over there. She's been standing alone for quite some time now. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? <laughs> You're just assuming some stuff, Paima. Maybe we better go check on her. Uh, hello there. Excuse me. Are you alright? Uh, I'm fine. Thanks. What are you doing here all alone? I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Where? Which hill? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> no people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly, and the air was filled with the scent of the sea. But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. It won't be long before it swallows us. What are you saying? Uh, sorry, Paimon doesn't really get what you mean. Uh, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friend? Now who is this? I'm just going to pretend I don't know who this is. Oh, and you are? Yeah, who are you? 
for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is a traveler! We just arrived in Fontaine. We were just talking with your sister. Uh, even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Your sister is emo. Hmm, I see. It's unusual for Lynette to be so willing to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the one talking for some reason. There's hardly anything left for me to say or with you around, Paimon, because you always steal my lines. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? Yes. I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. And then we have something in common. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. What did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you too? Ah, uh, the water is evil. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. Okay, what is happening in Fontaine? Where to begin? Hmm... Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Traveler? Hi. Hello, Linny. It's a pleasure to meet you. And hello, Paimon. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? Your hand is too small. <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. So you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Hmm, good timing. Let's go together. You said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady uh -oh. Farina has come to see you. What's happening? Oh no. Who is this? Uh, we don't want any trouble, ma'am. Is that the Hydro Archon? Huh. So, she's the Hydro Archon? But how did she know we were looking for her? People, rich and poor, those with cup in hand and those with nothing at all. Raise your glasses in celebration! If you don't have one, then just raise your hand and leave. Okay, the sassy attitude, I don't like that. As you can all see, two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation. Okay. Make a toast in honor of this traveler and her companion who have journeyed here from distant lands. Why do we have to make such a huge commotion? She came all the way here just to greet us and make a, such a huge deal. I've long heard of the turmoil and chaos you left in your wake as you visited other nations, but I welcome you nevertheless. No, I have come to receive you personally. Okay, I am honored. For insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured. I see clearly your sincerity. Okay, this might be the weirdest archon I've ever met. <laughs> of course, seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct bed. Okay. Are you here to just brag to us or what? I, Fosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Well, finding the Archon was easy enough. I still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. Yeah, how do you know we're coming? You have a spy or something? Uh, I see. As Outland.
Commanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. You had best stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? All it oh, that guy. My finger for me to know everything about you. Oh, is the guy frying on us at the desert earlier? Whoa. Talk about sounding high and mighty. Someone need to humble her quick. Feels like she can't get over herself. Oh, what's with these looks? Perhaps the welcoming ceremony still isn't enough. What else should I say then? Just stop talking. Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? Yes. I am the legendary blood traveler. Yes, it is I. Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course. That's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are about. Lady Farina came here to personally see her. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. A duel? Not again. I don't want to fight another god. I've had enough with Raiden. Got to see this. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all. What are you saying? You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land. Just as you were hoping to see. Don't get too overconfident now. Uh, now she wants to fight? What the hell? Fighting gods? I've got a resume. <laughs> Are you not afraid? Might I remind you that this is a duel against the divine? I fought a lot of divine enemy before. You're not the only one, and I'm not afraid. What are you trying to do, traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? She provoked us first. <laughs> Stand down, Clorend. I admire her bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. She is obviously a true warrior. You're not the first god I draw my sword to. Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled. And a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement. Well, I don't give a damn. Yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. You see. Then, as the god of justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! Oh my god, we just arrived here. How exactly do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? We literally just arrived here and we haven't committed any crimes. <laughs> We have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Flying objects? I don't... Oh, I see. You mean Paimon is a flying object. <gasps> Paimon is not an object. She's, uh, uh, my friend. Yeah. Nicely. Now, if you two have no objections, then in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. Hey, this is clearly abuse of power. My apologies, Lady Farina. I don't mean to spoil the fun. Help me, Lene. I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. Great magician, Linny. I'll permit you to object. But how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? What is happening here? We've been standing here for a while now. With such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. We're gonna see a magic trick now. Okay. What is happening to us? Ta-da! What the hell is happening to us? What did you do? What's that on back? Hey, when did you do that? Ah, I see. It's when Linny patted you on the back. That's why. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. 
<laughs> Are you gonna laugh? You're gonna laugh. Amusing. Very amusing, Lenny. This Archon really know how to waste our time. Consider the matter of your trial resolved. What kind of justice is this? When there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! Finally, that Archon left. I don't want to deal with that. Did you, uh, know that was going to happen? Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. Now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? An attention seeker, sassy attitude, bastard. She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Yeah, confusing is a good way to put it. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? Oh, sure. We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway. I would be delighted. Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Is there any way I can help? You really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. Sure. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. What will the magic pockets do? As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Is there no way to prevent the disaster? Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl? Yeah, why? Huh? What's wrong with her? Hyman didn't notice anything. What's up? <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Oh. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Oh, he's right! Shh, keep your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. Understood. This is the spot where Linny wanted us to wait. Oh, there she is. Look, isn't that her? Time to make the arrest. Oh, she's running. Did she notice us? She, what should we do? Should we chase her? Her job is to block this path and the rest is up to Linny. For a while now, I'm not wondering if Linny caught the thief. Something's wrong. Let's go find Linny. Yeah, let's go. Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. No, that was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Oh, to catch her. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Were you returning with the thief at stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. Hmm, tricky. So, we ride this thing to go into the city? What an ingenious way to get around! People in Fontaine really know how to use water! It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. Oh, is this Charlotte? Huh? What? Charlotte! It's Charlotte. Hey, what you doing here? Oh, I never guessed I'd bump into you while riding the Aquabus. In the story of my life, this is big news. What are you doing in Fontaine? I didn't hear anything about you paying us a visit. Yeah, it's quite the coincidence. But as travelers, we're always on the move. It's not 
surprising that nobody knew we were coming. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird. Nice to meet you. From the Steambird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. What I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. These smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Well, you're in luck. Since I'm here, something bad might happen. I can just feel something major will happen in this country. I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. Okay, what case is that? You mean the serial disappearances of young women case? That's right. These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird. When that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't wait for the truth to be revealed. So, what is the serial disappearances of young women case? Yeah. That's right. The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. 20 years ago? I thought it was recent. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. Oh. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age and that they've all vanished without a trace. None of the girls have ever been found. I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed. First of all, why are they kidnapping young girls anyway? Hey! Land of Hydro, Nation of Justice. Sounds pretty badass, not gonna lie. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you. I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone. That's the life of being a reporter. If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? I should have done the main quest first, then explore later so I can get a first impression. <laughs> but I explore, unlock everything first, then I do the main quest. I, I don't think I need to explore this place anymore. I've seen pretty much everything already. Ah, Fremene, your home. Who's this? Allow me to introduce you to my little brother, Fremene. He is a phenomenal diver. Hi. Uh, Lenny, could you come here for a moment? What is it, Fremene? Do you have something to tell me? It's alright. You go ahead. We were just discussing a little housework. Sorry for the interruption. Before I forget, the Traveler and I collected more materials to make magic pockets. Were you able to get any, Fremene? Yes. I went diving and gathered lots of materials. I was about to give them to you. He sounds so monotone. He's like, yes, I went diving and gathered a lot of materials. I was about to give them to you. It's not like that. That's our Fremene. Always quick with the underwater work. All right, I'll take these to the workshop. Uh, hello? Is there anyone here? Oh, hello there. New customers? Looking to buy, or do you need something made? Or perhaps you're just looking for a chat with me. We're just here to deliver some stuff. Oh, no, we're just here to deliver some materials. Here yeah. They are. They're for making... Uh, what were they called again? Magic Pockets. Ah, these must be for Magic Pockets. I could tell right away. I've already made several orders worth now. Basically, everything we usually use here in the city is powered by indemnitium. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials? Like the court trials? Huh? How can trials produce energy? So people commit crimes just to produce electricity in a fountain. I know weird. When a trial is in session, the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinale harvests people's beliefs. Oh my god. Basis and converts it into energy to be used all around Fontaine. Aratrice Mechanique de Annalise Cardinal. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Paimon heard that the Oratrice was created by the Archon to make judgments. Paimon still doesn't get it. How could something unreliable like people's beliefs be turned into a stable power source for these machines? Well, Venti and Nahida both said the gods rely on belief to obtain power. Without us believer, the god will just be a simple mortal. So that means the Hydro Archon relies on the machine to take the energy created by belief and turn it into power for all of Fontaine, right? That is correct. I thought I'd find you hard at work, but here you are chatting the day away. Since you're already talking, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a few words with me. What do you want? We're busy here. Y you again? 
Didn't I already promise you that I'd have the Morio to Conferry of Cabrier by next month? Why are you hounding me now? Yeah, but how do we know that you won't go running off by the end of this month? I want 50% today. Wait, no, 70%. Huh? You. Seems business isn't so great for the workshop. We've already finished our job and delivered the materials. Maybe now's a good time to leave? Before huh? you go around trying to collect payments, why don't you settle your own debts? Hey, child, it, it's such a surprise seeing you here. Oh my god, I didn't expect to see him here, man. Prairie of Cabriere wants to poach clients from Northland Bank, that's fine. But I'm afraid you still owe the bank a hefty sum of more. So why don't we work things out between us first, before you get back to your little conversation here? Uh, you're from uh, Northland Bank. Uh, but we said we'll pay everything we owe next month. Why are you hounding me now? Traveler, Paimon, I didn't think I'd run into you here in Fontaine. Hey, yeah, watch the chance as well. And what are you doing here? You sure seem to have run into a lot of friends today. Fontaine is really a curious place. <laughs> Long story short, I've already been in Fontaine for some time now. And honestly, things have been pretty boring. Hey, you, Northland Bank boy, aren't you forgetting something? Don't interrupt. It's not often I run into the traveler like this. Why don't you wait for me over there? You kidding? Aren't you the one looking for us? You really expect us to sit and twiddle our thumbs while you catch up with your friends? I'm warning you, man. I can't help you when this guy got pissed. Listen to me, boy. If you want your mora, fine. Why don't you come and take it? All right, just get ready to pay for your hospital bills next morning. All right, boys. Let's see who has to pay up now. Yeah. Oh, what's your deal, Brad? How are you so strong if you're just a staffer from Snezhnaya's Northland Bank? Wait, don't tell me you're... This is the Fatui Harbinger right here. Oh, now you notice. It's a little late, don't you think? Just make sure you understand that you don't mess with Northland Bank. Got it? Huh? Oh. That never happened before, right, child? <laughs> Did he just punch him in the face? <laughs> that was weird. What just happened? Are you feeling all right? I'm not sure. It's as if I suddenly lost control of my hydro powers when I needed them. Look at them running away. There's something wrong with my vision? Uh oh. Something bad gonna happen to child. How could that happen? First time Paimon's ever heard of someone losing control of their vision. Maybe because it's the after effect of using too much dilution power. Never mind. It doesn't matter. If I want to stay sharp, I shouldn't be relying too much on my vision anyway. Besides, I always have my delusion in case I need it. I guess it's because I've been in a bad mood lately. Wait, since when do you feel down about anything? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still have a lot to learn about myself. But recently, there seems to be some sort of restless power stirring inside of me. Maybe you losing control of your vision just now is connected with that power you're feeling inside. I can't remember if I ever mentioned it before. But when I was 14, I fell into some unknown abyss. It was during that time I learned nearly all of my abilities. The one who took me under her wing and taught me was named Skirk. Skirk? What kind of name is Skirk? She was always quiet and very mysterious. Nobody knew where she came from or what she had been through. And she was always very strict when teaching me combat techniques. I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was because I had awakened it and traces of it remained on me. She said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. She never explained that. But my guess is that it's related to a dream I saw when I had just fallen into that abyss. Oh, seems the time really flies when I'm talking with you. I just remembered I have somewhere else I need to be. So I should get going. In Fontaine, before a criminal goes to court, they're given one chance to defend their honor by requesting a duel with an official champion duelist. The champion duelists are all powerful fighters selected from among the nation's best. And the duel itself is a no-holds-barred fight with no specified stopping point. So engaging in such a duel is regarded as a symbol of defending your honor. If a criminal manages to win the duel, they'll be acquitted. But if they lose, they'll have no choice but to stand trial. And the worst case scenario is that you're simply killed in the duel. Before I forget, I want you to have this. What is it? 
Huh? Your vision? You're seriously just giving it away? Why? I'm just worried that it could become uncontrollable again. I'd be pretty upset if it got in the way of my duel. So, I think I'll be better off without it for now. I just need you to hold on to it for a short while. I'll come retrieve it when I have some time later. I'll be in touch later. Oh, Archon. Please bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray. I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. I guess if they're our kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Romantic. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fun King. There sure are a lot of couples here. Damn it. I don't have anyone by more than... Huh? Not this again. I've seen couple stuff like this in Sumeru. Whose voice was that just now? Ah, uh, Traveler and Paimon. Good to see you. I knew you two would come. The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already reserved your seats, and here are your tickets. You did? How kind of you. Thank you. Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Hey, Lenny, could you come over here and take a look at this? I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cal, my assistant, calling me. I'll go lend him a hand. Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Lenny. Uh, there's a guy and he's sitting next to us. <clears throat> this is awkward. Let's not try to engage in any conversation. <clears throat> wow, this place is so huge. Hey, traveler. Maybe we should strike up a conversation with the person next to us. Since we're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still. It's kind of awkward if we don't say anything. Hey, isn't that usually your job? Why are you saying that to me? Hey, you're always the one who's talking. Excuse me. I did not realize you felt awkward. Oh. I am terribly sorry. To see what you did, Paimon. Uh, it's, no, it's our fault. I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like. Uh, so you heard all of that, did ya? <laughs> Boy, you sure have good ears. Paimon thought she was keeping her voice down. Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon. Sorry. Um... Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking under her breath like that. Uh, so, let's talk, but, uh, <laughs> what should we talk about? Paimon, this is getting even more awkward. Man, this guy's handsome. Look at that striking eyes. Kinda remind me of Zhang Li. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Vaudane. Yes. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across Tevat. Oh, you did? And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... You are? Oh, Monsieur Nervillet. What an oh. honor it is to have you here to see my show. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Oh, this guy is so humble. I like him. Wait, Nervillet? Could he be... It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. Oh my god, forgive me for my rudeness, Monsieur Nervillet. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. Yeah, these guys really remind me of Zhang Li. I love his voice. By the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to. Yeah? There's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a while now. I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what do you want from us now? Oh, it's Farina, the Hydro Archon. <laughs> she sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Because she has no idea that you saw right through her act. Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now enjoy the show. Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. 
Whatever. Two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. <sighs> Whoa. Do that. Whoa, where that bird came from? Oh my god, a card. Oh no, another card. But this isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Wow, where does bird come from? Using this water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely, right before your very eyes. <sighs> it's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage. So let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. Whoa. Are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi. Uh, I'm back. Uh-huh. <sighs> Bravo. Bravo. That's the most beautiful thing about magic. You don't know what's happening. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still my assistant, after all. In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. If my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now... There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. A swap! Swap. Ah, yes. The classic. Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge from the opposite box. Now please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Row 7, seat 3, congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand. For Wait, I kind of recognize this person. Please come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. 
I'm sorry, it might be a little cramped inside, but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. But no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. Oh, okay. All right. Before I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. 59, 58! That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. 40, 39, 38! Mr. Linney, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double checking the direction of the magic. It would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong places. For example, midair right above the audience. Uh, what's that sound? Uh, what was that noise? Did you hear it too? I don't know. It sounds like it come from the stage. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. Might be just the part of the trick. Let's just watch. 25, 24, 23. What's wrong, Mr. Linny? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black in here. I can't tell left from right. Never mind the decorations. There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17. Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it's <laughs> tiring to do such a long countdown. Ten seconds and change is still plenty of time. Ten! Almost there now. Eight. Whew, swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait. Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Six, Honestly! Five! Four! Three! Uh, whoops! Two, that doesn't count! One, zero! Ah, bravo! Bravo. How did he do that? Oh, wow. Huh? Oh. Is that supposed to happen? Is that supposed to happen? Huh? What the hell happened? Is this part of the show? Mr. Linney, you're going to use magic to fix the stage now, right? What happened? Oh no, maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? Oh no. This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. What the hell happened? This is a murdering case right here. The person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. We are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance, and there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! Mr. Linney is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case! Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident! This all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? 
The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? That whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right. How can Lenny do this? Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linny and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Rena said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. Kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. My dear people, but what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, traveler. You'll support Lenny, won't you? After all, he was the one who helped you the first time we met. I trust Lady. Then there's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I already had a duel the first time we met. No, we did not. But with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. But draws really are the most boring possible outcome. So no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And what better place to hold such a riveting showdown and decide the true victor than here, on the grandest of stages, the Opera Epicles! I understand. Charges have now been pressed. And as such, a trial is in order. Seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment, I would like to ask you, are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? Yes, I am. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build their cases and search for the truth. Linney and his troop are all potential suspects and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm really quite looking forward to hearing it. Lenny! Hey guys, you guys alright? Sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? No, not really. Just surprised. I'm a little shaken up myself. How could this happen? And poor cow. I know you already claimed that you would defend me. But now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? I honestly don't know yet. It's hard to say. I understand. Even I'm not sure what happened, so I can only imagine how difficult it is for you to grasp the situation. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries, such that all that's left is confusion. And I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. It is indeed very strange. Which is could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. <laughs> what happened to Paimon faces? Where did you get those glasses? Don't worry. Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. Don't worry. I have 39 mil in my pockets. You can buy whatever you want and I still have a lot of money. I might be even richer than Ningguang. <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. I need to get back to my normal self. But with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. Don't worry. I'll make sure to gather every info. Yes, thank you so much. I won't let you down. Hello, officer. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Huh? What do you mean? Why? Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking and everyone generally liked him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with Cowl inside it. But why was Cowl inside? Wasn't there a girl supposed to be in there? 
This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces of the girl. Very strange. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. Ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. Yeah, it's definitely a well-planned murders. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. Yeah, it's a good point. But he doesn't have a motive! Are you both good friends of his? I like to think we are, but we just met. We hardly known each other that much yet. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases, and I can tell you that people are the least reliable kind of evidence. Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Just know that I'm warning you for your own good. Thanks for your concern. I understand. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? Whoa. Look, this bit is made from different material. Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left. It seems to be uh, flammable, like a type of flesh cotton. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material in it, then that means... Yeah, it meant to burn. Wait, why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes. Hey, you. Yes, both of you. Over here eye on you for a while now who's this if i'm not mistaken you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth no and by the looks of it you're not from fontaine who are you yeah who are you have you never heard of the spina di rosula uh no i just got here from mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums you name it spina di rosula does it so, uh, you're just like detective or something like that? And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Hey, Navia, uh, what do you want from us? I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Boss, Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <laughs> Too many names to remember. I'm just gonna call you Navia. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. So, uh, you want to join the investigation as well? That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! Well, I love her design though, she looks so pretty. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? People are supposed to take it seriously, not like some sort of entertainment. I'd say no, it's kind of weird to do that. As I said, something serious like a trial shouldn't be treated like an entertainment. Doing so makes it so easy for the truth to befall by the wayside. <laughs> See, Silver and Malus? I told you they'd be different. Of course I'm different. I'm not even from here. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Oh, now you're bringing us with you? We haven't even agreed to your terms yet. Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. More like it. I think you're missing the point, Paimon. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. We'll be making some preparations first. Just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Lenny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! Okay, a long day. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Linny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? 
That'll be a tall order. Uh, we're just trying, man. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. Oh, so the machine has been exploited. Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. Who's this? Oh, sorry. Let me introduce you to Navia. Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? Uh, no, not really. I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Oh yeah, I just realized that. Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. So, uh, the back door isn't the same? Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. Oh, I see. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? Wait, does that mean there's not a box inside this one? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. So there was a passageway under the magic box! And this passage linked to the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley. All while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! I love how Paimon is always wearing these glasses and mustache. <laughs> she looks so silly with that. Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Now what about your side of the trick? Right. You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end. Ah, uh, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. Oh, so that's how you do it. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. That was you? I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. Why would there be water here? Maybe it was for a trick? Did the trolley knock it down while moving? That can't be. The trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Yeah. Let's note this down too and think about it later. What's this? Some sort of hooks. Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Lenny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. This is so 
confusing. Papa doesn't want to be a detective anymore. <laughs> hey, don't just give up like that. <laughs> what is this place? Look like a vent. It seems someone could fit through here. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Think so. She probably vented away from this place. Alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. Other than those boxes that go through the magic box. And Lini and Lynette were in the two magic boxes. Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down. Alright then, down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. We can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. Magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course. They lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? The flower face and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. There's no evidence that this third person even exists. True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. The only people left to consider are both technically victims, whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, poor Cowl. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick worked. That's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the magic troops' members. Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Yeah, the person behind this is very, very smart. Alright, it's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Alright, time to participate in the trial. I don't know what will happen. I'll, I'll prepare for the worst. Ah, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? Nothing good so far. We can't really find a very solid evidence to prove you're not guilty. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Just you wait. I will win this trial. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution, Lady Farina. Do you wish to refute his statement in any way? I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How could Linne not know about that sound? Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. Uh-oh, this is not good. Well then, 
ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> hmm, this is not good for us. I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Heart? No wonder they did something like this. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. The Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. Hey, Linny, why didn't you tell us this before? Yeah, why didn't you tell us you are of a Tui? Mr. Linny, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the opera house, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? There's no doubt about a magician's ability to con others. Given how Linné has concealed his identity, this could all have been set up beforehand. This child is here in Fontaine along with the other house operative. There must be some scheme at work here. Please answer my question, Mr. Linné. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. What should we do now? Permission to speak, Your Honor. Granted. My client has withheld some key information. My defense cannot proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief of the German. There are things that must be discussed. Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. Yeah, we even offered to help you guys. You should have just come straight to us. Very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. Save people? What do you mean by that? That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal, at least not in this case. Okay, before that, explain the other issues first. Where did you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Yes, the truth. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. And? What did you find? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. And whose voice is that? Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground. But the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. That explains why you didn't hear the thud. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. 
But like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. It's not like I want to leave you guys like this. I will defend you from these charges. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. No problem. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense. Actually, we already have a key evidence we need. Huh? Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean. You get what I mean later. Just watch. Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands before operating the devices such that Cal's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? Yes, we do. <laughs> Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! When the countdown started, Linny did indeed go into the tunnel. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of Time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent! There you have it. You believe that he knew nothing of the incident? Yes. That's right! I believe my opposition reasoning is flawed. My reasoning? Yes. The onstage equipment was clearly tampered. However, you say that Cowell bumped into Linny by chances. Yes. Oh, they have a point. Yes. <laughs> that's right, you tell them! And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Oh, oh I do. Do you happen to remember how you refuted Linus' alibi initially? Of course I do. Box the whole time. How could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? That's right! Linny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel. That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance. Indeed, he was somewhere else. This means that when the crime happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has <laughs> now become the best proof! <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> yeah, go get him, Paimon. <laughs> well played. If it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? Um, the killer was, in fact, Cowl, the deceased! Yes. <laughs> Is that so? How interesting! Let's hear your reasoning then. The criminal must have understood the method behind Linny magic tricks and must have been in position to easily modify the equipment, leaving aside how he died. 
Cowell had all the meaning to commit the crime at his disposal. The strange noise could likely have been the sound of Cowell and Halsey struggling. Linny was not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have given time for Cowell to bring Halsey out of the magic box in the audience stands. But according to the guard's testimony, no one entered or left the opera house, so even if he had taken her, there'd be no meaning of exiting. Exiting from the box would have been in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteeing they would be discovered. Where in the world did Halsey go? I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. I request that we examine Cowell's personal effects. We might find something there. So I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Thank you, Nivellet. does indeed appear to be at an impasse. I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards. Please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Cowell. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. Dissolve. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. You've got to be kidding! People dissolving into water? You two, with me, quick! Let's go. Just trust me. It is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. We cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Ahem! <clears throat> it's Ace Detective Paimon's turn to shine again! The original plan, Cowell would tamper with the water tank rope, and the number selector securing his target. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial seed inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowell would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. Oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? What a humiliation. See what you did. No. It seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. We found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? Oh no. Oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. <laughs> I think we've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale. <sighs> Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject. Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, 
Would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. I understand. Oh, she's back. Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me. And then, before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. But what Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian. And I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller. But I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there. And I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. No wonder you look familiar. So you were the thief. Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled. Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it. But then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Yeah, now it's time to refute the Hydro Archon's previous reasoning. Hey! Selected out of the blue, Lillian panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillian back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowl out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. There we go. That's the end of the line. She knew that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days. At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Thank you, thank you. Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? Just give up already. Answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <laughs> oh, he's mad. <sighs> what? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no, I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that! She's like a deflated balloon now! <laughs> I win. I win. This is what you get. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, 
selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the Opera House. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the Opera House, and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. Yes. <laughs> Victory for Ace Detective Paimon! Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in Linny's baggage? Hmm, how do you find it? Right, your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just following orders! From who? We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know, and seek the protection of the guards. Yes! I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The- <laughs> oh. <gasps> What? He turned into water. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. I shouldn't have expected any less of them. Who did this? An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Traveler, Paimon, please wait. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end, even after you learn that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatuse, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That that was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then too. Would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. 
Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first too, as if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. It took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. But wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. So what happened after that? managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood and the knave standing there in the darkness. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement. All of them orphans. Ew. Oh my god, that guy. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me. And so, she made me an offer. The house of the hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. So that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. The knave is after the Gnosis, isn't she? She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Saritza to first use the Gnosis' power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. From small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you as plain Linny. I understand. I've been playing this main quest for about three hours now. Hey there! What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? This whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? I'm sorry, Navia. What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Linny. I wasn't necessarily looking into the serial disappearance cases. Ah, I see. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? I'd just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. Well, if you say so. Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right then, let's have our farewell meal. Quest complete. Okay, I've been playing this quest for quite some times now. I think that's all I can add in this video. So uh, yeah, if you guys like my content, don't forget to leave a like or a sub. Thank you for watching to the end. And I see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye.